times and pointed out one used for shooting at police. Chief Vic Sorden says they worked with a number of agencies to target the most violent offenders. A West Monroe man has been charged with 500 counts of possession of child pornography under the age of 13. The Attorney General's office says they investigated Justin Sammons following a tip. Meantime, the special session on crime continues in Louisiana. A bill was approved to expand legal immunity for police except in cases of criminal actions, fraud, or intentional misconduct. Critics say it gives police too much protection. Supporters say it still keeps them in check. It now heads to the Senate. Meantime, another bill would lower the age limit for juvenile offenders to be tried as an adult, and another bill would raise sentence guidelines for certain crimes. Meantime, family and community members gathered outside the Union Parish Courthouse yesterday before a hearing in the Ronald Green case. He died in state police custody following a chase that ended in Union Parish in 2019. However, the hearing was rescheduled for today. Former trooper Corey York is charged with negligent homicide and malfeasance in office. His attorney says he plans to plead not guilty. Meantime, an appeal to quash his charges was denied. His attorney argued York's right to self-incrimination was violated. Meantime, the Washita Parish School Board has approved a bid to sell 300 acres of timber near Shinny Lake for $350,000. They say that money can be used to help students. And that's your news for now. I'm Jennifer Andrews for the Radio People. Good Friday to you. I'm meteorologist Don Wheeler. A beautiful day in store for our area as high pressure builds in behind a cold front that pushed through overnight. We will, however, continue to see above normal temperatures with yet another warming trend beginning Sunday. Today, sunny, high of 73. Tonight, clear skies, low 44. Saturday, sunny, high 72. Don't miss Dan Bongino right after Moon. Weekdays at 11 here on KMLB News Talk 105.7 and 540. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. It's time for the Morning Drive with KNOE 8 Sports Director Aaron Dietrich and Washita Citizen Sports Editor Jake Martin. It's your first look at the local sports stories, key games, and pivotal matchups. To join in on the conversation, call or text 324-1500. Presented by Jeff Guerrero, the injury attorney. Now, let's talk sports. Here are Aaron and Jake. Go! morning north louisiana what up how goes congratulations we have made it to friday thanks for sharing a portion of your friday more with us here on the morning drive what's up jake how you doing what's up man so you're uh, supporting the saints today yeah new uh, saints t-shirt there it's not new <laughs> yes it is what we call a bacon net yes it certainly is hey man <laughs> you, you get young kids you, you get plenty of bacon necks <laughs> Hey, all they do is pull on them. Uh, yeah. They pull on your shirt all day. So that's your excuse, and you're sticking with it. Yeah. Several different ways to hit us up. One would be the hotline slash text line brought to you by Landon Williams Shelter Insurance. You can hit us up at 318-324-1500. Plus, we're live on Facebook, The Morning Drive with Aaron and Jake. Before we get into some introductions and, of course, the major headlines, this really is an awesome time of the year, with uh, especially if you're a big basketball, baseball fan. With baseball season just getting underway. Oh yeah, this is a pretty awesome crossover right now. I love it too because, so if you're a high school fan, I think it's really good right now yeah. because you've got the quarterfinals that took place last night. Plus, on the baseball diamond, there were a lot of big matchups. Mm-hmm. Like I know Catholic and West Monroe got the most talk. Deservedly so. We're talking about two nationally ranked teams playing against each other. And by the way, the picture of the scouts that were in attendance was yeah. pretty darn cool. Yeah. But there were a lot of big games yesterday that we've got to discuss today. And so, it, yeah, it's very exciting. And by the way, high school girls postseason, uh, whew, it was uh, brutal. Not good. Brutal. So the ever under go down? Well, we thought it was just going to be Wasman anyway. I, and then we didn't even really – factor in Arcadia and the fact that uh, they are the number one. Are we so counting Arcadia? Can we, can we, um, well, we may jump on board with Arcadia. Can we get the hot tag with Arcadia? Yes. So if my math is correct, and we'll certainly get into this a little later in the show, what took place last night. So there are 
40 girls basketball teams still in the hunt for state championships. Does that sound right? I think so. With 10 state championships, we're down to the yeah, semifinals. Four in each. Uh, four times Delia, 10 man. is 40. <laughs> I think we're safe there. So of 40 across the state, you're telling me that we're down to two? That would be Arcadia and Wasman. That is horrible. It's not good. Horrible. Which, I'll say this. I think we've talked about this on air, but I've had many conversations. Girls basketball was down this year. Obviously. <laughs> I, I, but, I mean, like, you could go to a game and go. Yeah, this isn't good. This isn't good, yeah. 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 Was, it's like Wasman's a super team, yeah. and then the rest were kind of. I mean, even, like, the big matchups that we that we hyped up, like wasman Bastrop, yeah. those would end in 30 points. You yeah. know, I mean, it just, hmm. it, you, could, you could tell. Pick up the game. Girls basketball in Northeast Louisiana. I'll tell you It'll be this a long much. off season. I'll say this: Watch Wasman beat Bruley last night. Yeah, uh, Bruley probably better than most of the teams I saw this year in our area. <laughs> like I'm not trying to throw shade at teams in our area, but like Bruley, I was watching them. Like, and they had a running clock. And they had a running yeah. clock, but I was like, Bruley's not bad. Like, not bad. Yeah. Hmm. How's that outfit look? The wife asked. Not bad. <laughs> it just look. I get everything cyclical. Uh, you know, I, Wasman right now has kind of got to – and, like, teams like OCS, too, you know, they're typically in the hunt for state titles. They had a rebuilding uh, year. They were very young. Uh, Just – I think it all kind of happened at once this year. So, we're not going to say that uh, we're the sin law of basketball right now. No, I mean, you got to have it for multiple years, okay. you know. Right. And, all, by the way, sin law football has improved a lot. Yes, Washita being down a few years has kind of hurt this area, I think, too. Because usually in 5A, you got Washita holding strong. Yes. And listen, we got a texture. Yes, Arcadia is only 45 minutes away. I mean, it's right, but yeah, we got it. it's just they're not included in our TV market, so a lot of times I leave them out. Shreveport gets to claim them. Yeah. The radio market's a little different. We claim you, Arcadia. Go, Lady Hornets. So are they like right in the middle of us in Street Four? Yeah, right. Mr. <laughs> Rand McNally over here. What? Have you never been to Arcadia? No, I'm. What I'm saying is, yes. Like the Streetport radio stations, can they claim Arcadia? Are we claiming Arcadia? How's that work? Sure. <laughs> okay. You usually wait to see how successful somebody yeah, is. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's our team. Yeah, that's right. We got Ash. There's a bandwagon. I'll jump on it. <laughs> Ash. <laughs> Do like Thomas Bachman. Though. How about some introductions? Aaron here hanging out. Jake Martin from the Washington Citizen in the house. I'll turn this bad boy around. Skeet, skeet. I'm going to get on back home. Uh, Alan, pushing all the right buttons. Would I rather be feared or loved? Um, easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. I'm not superstitious, but I'm I am a little stitious. I love how Alan just takes some random quotes from you and now uses them as drops. I think that's Alan's yeah, stick. Yes, now. it's pretty awesome. I do want to say uh, regarding Aaron, your drop. He just announced his retirement. The uh, bowler. So uh -huh. Oh, I had nice. to play that in honor of him. Wow. How old is he? he not sure, but I think it was like a 40-something year run. I was like, how, how long has he been doing it? How long can you bowl? Yeah, Your a, long, entire life? a long time, but, yeah. I mean, that guy, that clip is really old, yeah. and he didn't look young in that clip. <laughs> wow. All right, let's go. Headlines on this Friday morning before we focus on what we're going to see this weekend. What deserves the top billing? Ooh. Yeah. That's tough. You know what I led with last night? Yulem Hoops? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got the Cajuns in town. I mean, he talks about Bob Marlin, 250 wins, yeah. potentially. He didn't get teed up last night. I was hoping for it. He was agitated. Yeah. And rightfully so. This team really struggled. Maybe it was just the defense that uh, ULM was playing. Cajuns with 15 turnovers last night. The biggest stat, though, ULL shoots four of 22 from three-point land. Mm -hmm. Four of 22. Allen could do better than that. I don't know about that. Okay. But that's 18%, folks, from deep. That's not good. Mm -hmm. And 
they also forced 15 Cajun turnovers, which also didn't help ULL's cause. Yeah. So Nick has 17 points in this win. This is an amazing stat. Uh, the Warhawks have now won five straight at home. They have now won seven of their last ten games. Six of those, of course, being at conference games. That's pretty good. That's really good. I mean, look, we were looking at, again, December, January, we were like, man, this team yeah. is struggling. This yeah. is bad. Yeah. To win seven of your last ten, heck yeah. of a turnaround. And the thing is, they keep playing like this. They're still going to be a, a tough out in this conference yes, tournament. Yes, yes. And the way they're moving, it appears that they will get a first-round bye. Which, who had that, you know? Yeah. Again, who had that a month or two? And then this is just a horrible loss, and I love reading the tweets from the Cajuns down there about how bad they played. And, of course, you're looking at a team that was in fourth place in the Sun Belt Conference. This was a stinker for them, and a lot of the credit, of course, goes to ULM. Yeah, it should. Absolutely should. So now uh, ULM, after uh, getting just torched uh, last week versus Troy, they get an opportunity to get a little revenge on Saturday versus the Trojans. Uh, this is the final home game, by the way, for the Warhawks. 2.30 on Saturday. Good win for ULM. I think we got a call here from uh, Mike Hammett last night. He gets a little excited, and rightfully so, as the Hawks win by seven. Jalen is a good free throw shooter. He has not been so tonight. He gets the first. It's a five or it's a six point game. This one can seal it. Second free throw for Bolden on its way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 66 59 ULM. Garnett up the floor with six seconds. Goes to the rim. Mental reach. Feely blocks the shot. Bolden pulls it in. It's a great day to be a ULM Warhawk. They beat the Ragin' Cajuns, 66-59. ULM 11-15 on the season, 6-9 in the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I just wish Mike Hammett would get a little excited. You know? Great day to be a ULM Warhawk. Keep that drop right there, Al. That's great. That's good. Man. Very good. Hey, and, it, and the fan Ewing did have a little bit of a different buzz last night. Yeah, well, they've been playing better. Any opportunity you have to knock off the Cajuns, ULM fans would love that. Yeah, and any time you get, you know, 50, 75, 100 students in there, and you know, yeah. they're right there near the bench, it certainly helps the cause. No doubt. Big win for ULM. I certainly think that deserves the billing as they continue to scratch and claw their way up the Sunbelt Conference standings. How about uh, Tech Men? We talked about it wasn't going to be pretty. A slight favorite on the road versus UTEP. They get Bacho back, but the story of this one was uh, Chavez and Crawford, what they did. ULM down at the half by two, and they've some, uh, ULM, Louisiana Tech somehow figures out a way to win this thing, uh, 65-59. Good win. Yeah, uh, and it, it doesn't matter. It's almost the same score, by the way, as ULM and ULL, kind of weird. But, you know, Louisiana Tech's going to have some of these. You know, when you rely on your defense, and, again, it's not always pretty, but you're winning games, a yeah. winning formula, and they get it done again. Well, afterwards, uh, Telvin Hester called it uh, one of his favorite wins of the season. I think that's just because of the fact that they hold uh, UTEP to 59 points and they hold them to just uh, 38% shooting from the field. Yeah. And, again, we were talking about going into it, just the, the discrepancy and uh, losing a tech success at home as opposed to going on the road and what UTEP's been able to do. Um, at home, and so that that was that was big, man. That was a really big road win. Yeah. So you get Bacho back, and he does score 11 points, has uh, five rebounds and five blocks. Chavez with the 20 points, Crawford with uh, 19. Uh, Will Allen, uh, man, big performance for him, especially on the boards, as he comes down with 10 rebounds. Mm. Just talk about a uh, you know stacking wins, and that's what Louisiana yeah. Tech continues to do. So a nice road victory for them. They now improve to uh, 19 and eight. You know, back in the day, you get to 20 wins, you've had a pretty good season. Yeah, I still consider it a good season. I think back in the day, you, you thought, hey, 20 wins, you got a chance to really get into the, the big dance. It's not uh, necessarily the case today, but, hey, man, this has been a really good year for the Bulldogs. So they uh, improved to 9-3 and three in conference play. I did see that uh, Sam Houston was also uh, winning last night, so the Dogs will remain in a first-place tie with them in the Conference USA standings. ULM women get back on track. This was pretty massive. The fact they scored 22 points in the fourth quarter, 13 of them unanswered. They go on to win 57 to 52. Nice win for Missy Bilderback, yeah. especially because it was against Southern Miss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No doubt about it. 
Uh, Lady Texters at home. Big win for them. They roll 85-69. Uh, former Cedar Creek standout in Aaron's ace, Anna Laura Robertson, with 23 points. They shoot a season-high 54% from the field. Lady Texters, a nice win. They haven't had many of them this year. In fact, they're just a 10-17 and 17 overall, 4-8 and eight in conference play. So, overall, a really good night for college hoops. Yeah. Didn't even mention, of course, uh, Kim Mulkey's squad against Auburn. Uh, Angel Reese. Got revenge. Yeah. Wow. 20, Angel Reese, 25 and 25. 71-66. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, speaking of not being pretty, eh, this game wasn't very pretty from LSU. But, you know, you, when you have 23 turnovers, definitely not pretty. But they did pull off a victory against a team that eh, did beat them earlier this year. All right, Jake, go ahead and have your fun. I'm sure you saw what Caitlin Clark did not do last night. Well, Quint said – and I actually read this, how about Iowa? But it's actually, how about Iowa's women's basketball last night? <laughs> yeah, she shot poorly, Aaron. I know. They lost to Indiana in a top 15 showdown. And what, Caitlin Clark, 8 of 26 last night. 3 of 16 from 3. Not great. But you know what? There were 17,722 fans there in Indiana to watch her. Look, we talked about that earlier in the week. She is the superstar mm -hmm. of college basketball, not just women. When you're going on the road and you're selling out just about every time you go on the road, mm -hmm. that's that's impressive. I think this is part of the master plan for Iowa. Though. I think the Indiana Fever is slated to have the number one pick. She's like, I don't want to play here in Indiana. She'll be like, all right, I just need to stay in Iowa City. And go no, back and play for the Hawkeyes. Right. So uh, they did drop a game, though. That being Iowa. I think they've lost uh, two in a row now. We have spent more time talking about Iowa women's basketball and hopefully a potential matchup with LSU down the road. We just need it. We just need it. There you go. You're caught up in the hardwood from the college ranks. We'll certainly get into the high school game coming up. Plus, on the diamond, plenty of storylines to discuss. No doubt. First, Allen, hit that button. It's Friday. Uh -huh, it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. And I just got paid. It's Friday, Friday. I'm free again. We'll knock off now and take the next two days off. It's Friday. Playing this game is quickly spiraling out of control. Hey. It's Friday. You win some, you lose some. It's Friday. We don't need you singing. You can do it! Yeah, baby, come on! Get ready, ready, ready for the wake-up! If you decide to accept that, you're going to seriously fly, son. Two guests lined up in the 7 o'clock hour. You're going to hear from former ULM and West Monroe baseball coach Jeff Schnick-Snyder. Now, of course, he's uh, making his move into the booth. Did you hear him last night with Gino? I did, I did. Sounded he was great. great. He was. He was awesome. He wasn't a rookie. No. And we'll, of course, uh, try to make this a regular thing this year with yeah. Coach Shake joining us. Looking forward to that. Well, hopefully we don't run him off in his first appearance this <laughs> yeah. year. Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, he'll join us around uh, 7-15. Louisiana Tech softball team, they've been a major storyline with just the one loss on the year. Head Coach Josh Taylor will join us at 7-45. I also believe uh, Clay Parker will make an appearance in the 7 o'clock hour. Speaking of Clay, he's got our answer for us. Arcadia is only 45 minutes away. They're 53 minutes to Shreveport, so we get the claim, Aaron. Take that, Shreveport. But how close are they to Bossier? I don't know. We don't have that. <laughs> but 49 miles. 45? Okay. We, we'll take it. Okay. Uh, we'll get into what took place on the Diamond. A national matchup in the high school ranks. How did it play out with the Mighty Rebels? We'll discuss after the break. You can bank on the morning drive, giving you the best sports news in the state. Stay tuned as Aaron and Jake bring more hard-hitting coverage to the airwaves. Brought to you by the team at Marion State Bank. Hi, folks, this is Reagan at Inks Firestone, where our top prices are buzzing. Great, $39.95. Tune up, $69.95. And funding alignments for $89.95. So, folks, if you don't want to get stung by high top prices, come on down to Inks Firestone for the best top prices in town. Just like a tree, Craftman Federal Credit Union has been rooted in our community for 70 years. Craftman is your financial partner who cares about your short-term goals and long-term success. 
by offering a wide range of financial services with great rates on certificate of deposit, savings, checking, IRAs, and a range of loans from home, mobile home land to auto, motorcycle, and RV. Craftman Federal Credit Union, where dreams are a reality. Visit us at one of our two convenient locations, Bastrop or Sterlington. Hello, I'm Lauren Guerrero. My father is Jeff Guerrero. You may know him as the injury attorney. If you or a loved one have been injured or are a victim of medical negligence, call my father, Jeff Guerrero. The insurance companies have attorneys and adjusters working hard for them. You need Jeff Guerrero working hard for you. For personal, local representation, call Jeff Guerrero, 325-4306. 2200 Forsyth Avenue, Monroe, Louisiana, 71201. 325-4306. Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic is the official sports medicine provider for ULM and La Tech Athletics. The experts at the North Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic are focused on one thing, continuing the highest quality health care available in North Louisiana. Their 14 surgeons in Monroe, West Monroe, and Ruston offer the most up-to-date, specialized care and minimally invasive techniques in spine, total joint replacement, hand and upper extremity, foot and ankle surgery, and sports medicine. Visit NorthLAOrtho.com. Hello, this is Jonathan Washam, former Louisiana Tech and OCS slugger. My playing days are over, but I'm always looking to help out a teammate. As your local shelter insurance agent, I promise to be there for you in your time of need. I pledge to give you the best coverage along with the unmatched service. To team up with the top shelter insurance agent in North Louisiana, call me at 318-387-4068. Spa Nouvelle in Monroe offers a variety of services to give you a first-class spa experience. Combining beauty, comfort, knowledge, and personalized attention to ensure you have a memorable visit. Spa Nouvelle offers massage services, facial treatments, and more. Book a package for yourself or pick up a gift card for that special someone in your life at SpaNouvelle.com. Spa Nouvelle, located at 1705 Lammy Lane in Monroe. Call today, 816-4949. That's 816-4949. It's a beautiful day in Monroe and all over Washita Parish. Hi, I'm Roy Heatherly. And I'm Mike Downhour. Join us every Tuesday at 5.06 p.m. for the Monroe Chamber Happy Hour as we interview special guests to keep you informed on the exciting things happening. Monroe and Washita Parish have incredible business stories we will be sharing with you. Plus, we will bring you breaking business news for our area. Join the Monroe Chamber of Commerce Happy Hour every Tuesday afternoon at 5.06 p.m. right here on News Talk 105.7 and 5.40 a.m. Arr, folks, this is right in the deep fire stone, but we have the best fire prices in town. Right, $39.95. Tune up, $69.95, and front end alignments for $89.95. So if you don't want to walk the plank, come to Ink Fire Stone for the best fire prices in town. Aaron and Jake are back with the top sports takes of the day. Join them in the Marion State Bank studio. We live where you live. Well, check out uh, Jake this morning. All you got to do is go to our Facebook page, The Morning Drive with Aaron and Jake. Shout out to Amanda, Quint, Chuck, John, others, of course, watching as we speak. You want to talk high school hoops before West Monroe and Catholic? Well, it was quarterfinals. Okay. Got to give these ladies their due, even okay. though it wasn't a great evening for us locally. I think we started with uh, nine teams, if I'm correct. We're down to two. Yeah. And that's too after we, uh, you know, talked about claiming Arcadia. So, right. Waspin, let's start with that. Waspin looked great. Uh, not, no shocker there. They won 67 to 21. Uh, Lady Wildcats drew yet another running clock. Uh, Denia Ross led all with 19 points. And how many games have you been to this year where they've had a running clock? I think every for, game I've been to. <laughs> with Waspin. That's always the thing. Like, they're so dominant yeah. that shout out to Trey May in January. I sit by Trey May yeah. all the time. We're always debating what quarter oh. is the running clock. <laughs> Who's been more accurate this season? He's, he's been pretty accurate. Um, he, yeah, he, he's nailed more than me. But last night it was the third quarter when they got the running clock. Brittany Burton, I thought was really good too. Uh, you know, not just she scored 14 points, not just being effective in the low post scoring wise, but I mean she just. That Wasman's press put so much pressure on folks that you know they turned the ball over. But if they're able to beat the press, you got Brittany Burton waiting down yeah. there, and she just turns girls away. Yeah. Like that's why they're, they're so difficult to beat. It has been fun to watch her game develop over the last. Oh, couple she's of years. definitely developed. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hmm. 
So uh, Wasman moving on, but now things are getting a little bit more interesting in the semifinals. Mm-hmm. So we'll match up against a couple different old foes. Yep, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun in the state championships. So uh, the big news yesterday or last night was the fact that uh, Bastrop lost. Yeah, a game in which a lot of people felt like Bastrop should have won this game. Um, had some opportunities, some layups that just couldn't couldn't go home. Uh, the other big stories are the other losses, and well, of course, we had the matchup between Arcadia and Oak Grove. Caroline Bradley, of course, coming up that 38-point performance. This was actually the best game of the night with Arcadia prevailing. Yeah, yeah, it was. And we knew Oak Grove could give them fits. Obviously, Caroline Bradley can offer so many matchup disadvantages for, for, for teams, and she was able to do that. But Arcadia, just a little bit too much for Oak Grove last night. Just off the top of my head, so uh, Cedar Creek gets run off the court by uh, Southern Lab. They're very, very good. Yeah. This just in. Claiborne Christian had a heck of a season, but uh, yep. their season also comes to an end. Hard-fought loss, four-point loss for them. We talked yesterday about uh, Stroynton, of course, the historic season they have had. Yeah, they got off to a quick start. Um, <laughs> Lee Doty described the game as a rugby match. Uh, I think it was a very physical matchup, and Stroynton was unable to prevail there. Am I missing anybody else? Just off the top of your head. Mitch yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that's pretty much right. Family community loss to family yeah. Christian. Which that was too, yeah. Yes. Oh, and Rustin. Yeah, listen. R- Rustin uh, was down by 20 points. They made a game of this, but ultimately they fall to Denham Springs. Yeah. So it hasn't been a banner year for girls uh, basketball, but we'll see. Hopefully Wasman or Arcadia can bring a couple titles home. Yes, hopefully uh, two championships uh, there. Uh, there's not many uh, flags that they're going to be waving, but we do have those two schools representing Northeast Louisiana. Yep. On the boys' side, the playoffs get underway tonight. I think 29 area teams in all. Several teams getting uh, buys as well. Yeah. So it's with the new bracket format, uh, the, the heavyweights, of course, getting the opportunity to sit out the first round. It always makes this round – I don't know if it's anticlimactic. I don't know. I mean, it, I guess it allows teams like, like I look at the, the Neville Sam Houston matchup. That's a lot of fun. That that's kind of taking center stage for me. That's a that's a really fun local matchup. That you know that that probably would be the marquee anyway because in the past you would get a two or or, or three or four seed taking on a twenty eight twenty nine seed and. Those would typically be blowouts anyway, mm. so I don't know if I don't I don't think it does, Aaron. I think you would you normally be getting a a lopsided matchup anyway. Hmm. Well, we got a what Union and uh, Richwood tonight. Yep, yep. So uh, if you want to go check out some high school hoops tonight, there's certainly some opportunities. Oh, yeah. to head out to a nearby gym. There's a lot of teams hitting the road though. A lot of teams hitting the road. Let's take a timeout. Coming up next, we head to the diamond. The matchup between West Monroe and Catholic. How much fun is this? One game down. They got two more to yeah. go in this series. We can only hope that the next two are as good as the first. No doubt. We'll also look ahead to a big uh, weekend on the college diamond. And how about Josh Pearson, what he did last night or yesterday <laughs> afternoon? That's all coming up next on the Morning Drive, presented by Jeff Guerrero, the injury attorney. You can hit us up. On Alayda Williams, Shelter Insurance Hotline, 318-324-1500. We'll be right back after this. Get rolling with Aaron and Jake on the morning drive. Every weekday morning for your top sports coverage. This hour is proudly sponsored by our friends at Ink Firestone. Now, let your voice be heard on the hotline by calling or texting 324-1500. Play ball. For 31 years, Inks Firestone has stepped up to the plate for our area schools and teams. It is our commitment to local sports that we take pride in. Hi, folks. This is Reagan from Inks Firestone. Let's make sure you slide home safely from your next trip to an area ballpark. Come see me at Inks Firestone for the best tire prices in town. Hello, I'm Lauren Guerrero. My father is Jeff Guerrero. You may know him as the injury attorney. If you or a loved one have been injured or are a victim of medical negligence, call my father, Jeff Guerrero. The insurance companies have attorneys and adjusters working hard for them. You need Jeff Guerrero working hard for you. For personal local representation, call Jeff Guerrero, 325-4306. 2200 Forsyth Avenue, Monroe, Louisiana, 
7201-325-4306. Growth, efficiency, professionalism, qualified staff. It's what all healthcare facilities are aspiring for, and that is what we do. Legacy Rehabilitation, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy solutions for a wide variety of healthcare facilities, including acute care hospitals, inpatient rehab, long-term care facilities, and outpatient therapy clinics. Whether you have staffing, management, or consulting needs, Legacy is awaiting your call. Call 318-255-5980 for more information or visit LegacyRehab.net. Legacy Rehabilitation. Ron Alexander, Clothiers for Men. Hello, this is Ron Alexander. Treat yourself to the luxury of our fine tailored custom shirtings. With over 500 fabrics, 20 collar styles, and a half dozen cuff styles, the possibilities are endless. Nothing less than a perfect fit results with shirts sewn to your specific measurements. Throughout this month, purchase five custom shirts and your sixth shirt is free. You owe it to yourself to find out what others already know. Knowing how to dress is knowing where to buy. Drop in early to pre-order. 1615 North 18th Street, Monroe. I'm William Sparks at Sparks Nissan Kia in Monroe. If you're looking for a top quality pre-owned vehicle, come see us. Every pre-owned vehicle on our lot is Sparks certified by our factory trained technicians so you can drive with confidence. And we've got a huge selection of trucks. Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, nearly every make and model. Two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, gas, diesel, and heavy duty. Don't buy a pre-owned vehicle just anywhere, be sure to come see us at Sparks Nissan Kia Monroe or online at drivesparks.com. Attention business owners. Did you know that ad recall is lifted up to 37% when digital advertising is paired with radio? The digital people and the radio people can supercharge your advertising efforts with our current advertising special. Combine the power of radio plus digital advertising to get your message heard loud and clear on the most listened to radio stations in the market paired with online display ads. Special packages are available now, so act fast this sale ends March 31st. Call the radio people at 388-2323. Hi, folks. This is Reagan at Inks Firestone, where we are locally owned and operated for 31 years and three generations. We take pride in our community and their team sports. So come down to Inks Firestone for the best tire prices in town. The lines are open. Give us a call or text. On the Landon Williams Shelter Insurance Hotline. All right, so West Monroe versus Catholic. you got two uh, nationally ranked teams. You have Max Preps that has the Rebels going into this matchup, number two in the country. So many times, especially early on in the year, you get some uh, hype and you get all the high expectations for a showdown like this, and it'll be a dud. That was not the case last night, Jake, in this game versus the Bears and the Rebels. Yeah, you know, and, and we were wondering, when is William Schmidt going to pitch for Catholic? Mm. This is the kid who, who throws 96. He's uh, one of the best, if not the best pitcher in the entire state of Louisiana, one of the best in the country. And he did pitch last night. And so when you're looking at this game, Aaron, and you see West Monroe's got an opportunity yeah. to knock off Catholic on the night that where William, pit, William Schmidt pitches, like, oh, this could be a huge, huge win for the Rebels. And fortunately, they weren't able to get it done in extra. Talk about living up to the hype. Yes, West Monroe falls 4-3 to three in nine innings. We'll yeah. get into how this uh, played out. But uh, he was the real deal. Oh Anybody gosh. was watching on uh, the side and then, of course, listening to Shake and uh, Gino. I mean, he goes out. You look at his final stat line. He gave up uh, three hits, two runs. Uh, he had a walk, but he had nine Ks. I think there was a, a streak there where he had uh, six straight Ks. On the uh, internet broadcast, they were talking about he was the 18th best prospect for the MLB draft. Yeah. I mean, he, he's 18th a... 18th overall. Yeah. And, and not only that, but the Jack Ruckert kid. Yeah. How, how good was he at the plate? Mm-hmm. You know, he was on fire at the plate. So, what's, what was so cool about this and why it was hyped up as, as much, you take a look at one lineup, and they've got three straight Division One guys actually... I think West Monroe's got four, four straight. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at uh, Catholic, and they've got three straight. Mm-hmm. And so how many games do you watch where you've got at least three straight Division One kids back-to-back-to-back to back to back for both teams? Like, that is special and unique. And I love when uh, Gene and Shake would point out, oh, he uh, hit 95 there. He hit 96, it, it just matter-of-factly. Oh, yeah, he's throwing the gas. And uh, by all reports, he topped out at 90. Seven miles an hour last night. Wow. And you mentioned uh, the number of uh, scouts there uh, checking him out and others. 
Yeah, but it was cool seeing the picture of so many radar guns and just, just guys that were there. Clearly, they were there to scout. Yeah. Uh, but it was right behind home plate. It's kind of a cool sight. And adds a little bit more luster. I was thinking about this, Aaron. I, I don't think we ever got a great visual of the crowd. No. Um, but, you know, I was taking a look at LSU's crowd yesterday because you asked the question, who's going to have more people, yeah. which which game? I'm very curious to see, because especially late, I, I was listening to the, I was watching the feed, and it was Catholic's feed, and they were talking about some kids were coming over. I don't know where they were coming from, but it seemed like more and more mm. people were coming to the game as it was in extras. Listen, the feed was great. You're able to watch some of the game, but it just didn't, it didn't bring out the atmosphere. Got to put that mic outside. Yeah, it just didn't feel, you know, I mean, and it was an awesome atmosphere. You can tell that by listening to the radio broadcast. Right, then. right. Yeah, I get, know, just getting greedy, but it just. Well, no, I mean, there's, there's that, that's part of it, you know. I mean, you, you don't want it to sound like it, they're playing in a closet, you yeah. know, and sometimes that happens when you don't stick that mic outside. That's why a lot of broadcasters do listen that. Listen to this guy. Well, Jake I'm just Martin, telling the engineer. You, I mean, and listen, I don't even do it, but I go to enough games and I'm around <laughs> enough radio people where I see them. Hey, open up that window. Let me stick this mic outside. All right, so uh, talking points with this, the fact that uh, West Monroe is actually ahead. Three to two. They just needed yeah. to figure out a way to close this they had thing some opportunities, out. man. But ultimately, uh, Catholic, of course, uh, pushes across the tie and run. Base is loaded. Rebels have to bring the infield in. Who and other? Of all guys Who to be other? at the plate, William Schmidt, after doing it on the mound, he gets it done at the plate and uh, sneaks one through the infield. Yeah. Walks it off for the Bears. But, you know, innings prior – West Monroe had guys in scoring position just couldn't get that timely hit to to put Catholic away. But, look, man, this is a battle between two Goliaths in the yeah. state. I can't wait to see what happens tonight. The other part of it, of course, uh, Brayden Cupid, what he did on the mound Great. starting. And you're still talking about a young kid, a sophomore. His stat line, I think he ended up with a three and third innings pitched. Uh, five Ks gave up the one earned run. And, of course, as a freshman, he got an LSU offer. Yeah. So, He's he's very talented in his own right. So now you get uh, William Schmidt out of the way if you're Wes Monroe. And uh, Catholic, of course, has other great pitchers. But we'll see how it plays out for the rest of the weekend because we still have two more games left in this series. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. I, I do wish West Monroe was healthier on the bump. Hmm. You know, I'd love to see Ferguson go out and go seven innings. You're not going to get that. Um or or Brendan Eagers, you know, he, he's yeah. still recovering. So, I mean, that that's the only uh, part about this being so early in the season. But if you're West Monroe, you're like, look, man, this is a long season. We're not going to win the state championship yeah. in February. Let's get these guys some experience against elite competition. That, yeah. This is going to be great for them in terms of experience and, and rounding out, finding some guys that you can count on in big spots. And Roark, once they get him back, too. So. That's another guy that's missing, yeah. So going to be fun to watch this uh, Rebel squad, but they do drop their first game of the year. Yep. And Wade Simino will tell anybody, listen, you know, we're not going to go unbeaten. It is yeah, baseball. It's baseball. And we're going to take some lumps, especially with the, the quality of competition we're facing. But, look, I, I know we were kind of negative this morning about women's basket or girls' basketball, just kind of the, the way things went last night. But I got to tell you, baseball in this area is going to be special. We Y'all know about West Monroe by now. We spent so much time talking about them. But look at some of these other scores in the area last night. Look at what OCS did against Bird. Beat Bird 12 to 10. Zach White and Jacob Lilly each with three hits apiece in that one. Uh, Sterlington and West Washita lived up to the high. Mm -hmm. Sterlington picking up a 4 to 2 win against Woe. Dylan Downs was great on the mound. Allowed just three hits and, and, and two runs over five innings. Devin Downs able to collect the save. Uh, so some brothers there contributing to that victory. Then, hey, how about St. Fred? Say Fred getting the 5-4 to four victory over Parkway yeah. last night. Nick Riley getting the win on the bump. Cade and Bonato doubled and tripled in the win. Yeah. So, I mean, just you kind of look around and go, hey, man, we could have a special year on the diamond. Yeah, Coach Rush asked me, when's Jake going to start giving the Warriors some love? I said, I don't know. Probably got to win a couple games. <laughs> well, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. We'll get into what's going to take place on the college diamond coming up next, including LSU's weekend is already off to a fast start, and it's good to see a former West Monroe slugger tearing it up. We'll get into that. Plus, we got some contract details for a number of uh, college coaches in the football ranks. We'll discuss that also after the break. Continue to hit us up on the hotline slash text line brought to you by Landon Williams, Shelter Insurance, 318-324-1500. Teamwork.
work makes the dream work, and the morning drive has had the best team for 13 years. Jeff Guerrero, the injury attorney, has helped make the team possible. Aaron and Jake will be right back for more Morning Drive, presented by Guerrero and Guerrero, right after the break. Hi, folks. This is Brady from Mink's Firestone. We're not just about tires. We're about the community. We take pride in giving you the right tire at the right price. So come see us at your hometown tire dealership. Inks Firestone, the best tire prices in town. This is Robbie at America Mattress Outlet. Tax refund time is here, and you may have some extra money in your pocket. Don't blow it. Invest it in something that matters, yourself. At America Mattress Outlet, we can help you stretch that refund to get the maximum investment on your purchase. We will have king size for a queen size price and queen size for a full size price specials all month long. Plus, queen Eurotop sets as low as $5.99. American Mattress Outlet in Washington and Ruston, where you don't have to go into debt to get a great night's sleep. Randall Garvin's Captain Avery Seafood and Specialty Meats is now open. Two incredible and delicious institutions now under one roof. Fresh cut steaks, stuffed meats, and wraps. He's got fresh seafood of every kind, along with boiled shrimp, barbecue ribs, sausage, and chicken. Plus, there's always grab-and-go dishes if you're not cooking. Randall's is also taking ham and turkey orders for the holidays. Randall's Captain Avery Seafood and Specialty Meats, one block off 165 at 2607 for Rand and Monroe. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Hey everybody, Landon Williams here with Shelter Insurance. Call me today about Shelter's auto, home, and life options for a free personal protection review. When everything changes for you, call me, 318-322-0171. Hey sports fans, it's game time, and Marion State Bank is your trusted financial teammate and your home base for all things banking. Rooted in our community, we proudly support local athletics. Marion State Bank, rooted in local athletics, member FDIC and equal housing lender. North Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic is the official sports medicine provider for ULM and La Tech Athletics. The experts at the North Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic are focused on one thing, continuing the highest quality health care available in North Louisiana. Their 14 surgeons in Monroe, West Monroe, and Ruston offer the most up-to-date, specialized care in minimally invasive techniques in spine, total joint replacement, hand and upper extremity, foot and ankle surgery, and sports medicine. Visit NorthLAOrtho.com. Experience the best in patient care from the Surgery Clinic of Northeast Louisiana and Delta Vein Care. Using the latest in technology, their highly trained and knowledgeable physicians perform bariatric weight loss surgery, general surgical procedures, vein treatment, and more. Their goal is to provide compassionate, advanced care with minimal pain and recovery time. Reach your weight loss goals and live your healthiest life when you choose the Surgery Clinic of Northeast Louisiana and Delta Vein Care. Call to schedule your consultation today. Play ball! For 31 years, Ames Firestone has been your hometown tire dealer. Hi, folks. This is Reagan at Ames Firestone. Don't trust your family's safety to an out-of-towner. Let's make sure you get home safely from your next sporting event. Come see us at Ames Firestone for the best tire prices in town. Welcome back to the state's best radio show. The Morning Drive with Aaron and Jake on on KMLB is the home of hot takes and candid interviews live from the Marion State Bank studio. So, Jake, I know there was a little bit of pushback against LSU head coach uh, Jay Johnson and his scheduling in February. I mean, typically every year they play a bunch of cupcakes at the beginning of the season. But the pushback was the number of uh, afternoon games in th this month. Yeah, I had somebody I text me yesterday saying – why? Yeah. I got to admit, though, it kind of grows on you, and it's kind of cool. Well, it's cool for us who can watch it. <laughs> yeah, because that's part of our job. Right. Yeah. I, I had uh, a buddy text me. He works at a bank. He's like, this stinks, man. I can't <laughs> watch. He didn't say this stinks either. He, said, <laughs> he cleaned it up for you? Yeah, us? he's like, well, I can't watch it. Like, yeah. why, why is every game yeah. at 2 o'clock? And then the other beautiful part of it is, you know, ESPN Plus, I mean, high – High quality for LSU baseball. It doesn't feel like you're watching an ESPN Plus game, especially I mean, I we got Lynn Rollins and Ben doing it. And then yesterday you had, of course, Chris, Chris Blair. Blair on the mic. It's like, all right, this is pretty awesome. By the way, I, I know, you know, we have him on every week. 
but he had Matt McMahon in the booth yeah. yesterday. And I, I look, I haven't ever tried it, but <laughs> just doing this show, I can imagine how difficult it is to interview someone while calling a baseball game for radio yeah. because you're you're not oh, just yeah. you know what I mean like you've got to say everything that happens yeah. because people were driving around in their cars which I was myself you know listening to how about it. that win coach McMahon ball one yeah that's exactly how it was <laughs> but he made it effortless man how about that play at the end of the game ball two <laughs> Josh Pearson steps to the plate coach man awesome yeah what was your uh, mentality or philosophy using that 2-3 defense? And then you interrupt. Yes. <laughs> Single Josh Pearson. Yeah, I, and, I mean, that's just, he, again, made it easy, yeah. uh, effortless. Well, it's Josh awesome. Uh, it was, it was, you know, I'm sure it wasn't well attended yesterday at the box. There it didn't was look well a attended. a healthy crowd. And we knew against uh, Northern Illinois, we talked about the struggles that they had last year, that this yeah. was a mismatch, and we'll probably get another mismatch today versus Stony Brook. It's not the Stony Brook from a right. decade ago. Right, right. Um, but, I mean, look, it's – but to answer the question, I think we've already talked about this. The reason Jay Johnson wanted to move every game up is because he wanted to have an opportunity to get all the games in. Yeah. Meaning, if there is bad weather, you're already scheduled for earlier in the day. If it's late at night, obviously you miss it. If it's earlier in the day, well, we can push it back. So it just gives you more options, more opportunities to get the game in. But, By the way, college athletics is a funny game. The fact that uh, Matt McMahon, uh, the to- toast of the city right now, throwing out the first pitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, and, and good for them for, for capitalizing on that because Lord knows LSU men's basketball is the uh, the, the stepbrother of the bunch, I guess. The, the, you know, it's, it's, it's it doesn't get quite the pub that all the other sports get, but I think people are starting to pay attention after back-to-back top 20 victories. But back to this game, Aaron. Yeah, it's not a shocker that LSU won this one 10-2. to two. Story of the game, uh, they hit five home runs in all, and Josh Pearson was a part of it. Let's hear uh, as he stepped up, I believe, it in the fourth inning, he steps up to the plate. Here's Chris Blair. Two outs, runner at first. The pitch hammered in the air to right field, giving a quick look at Sapicki, and Josh Pearson follows suit. Braswell with his first home run of the year. Clean with his first home run of the year. Tommy White, and now Josh Pearson. Another two-run bomb for the Tigers, and that will make it 9-2 LSU. Hmm. Josh's first home run of the season. He didn't have to wait long to get number two. No, he didn't. His next at bat, Josh steps up to the plate. Pearson now digs back in from the left side with a hitter's count. Peterson fires. Pearson swats it to center field. Parcel on the run to the track to the wall. Straight away. Center field home run. Goodbye. Josh Pearson, second homer of the day. Second home run of the season. A solo shot. The Tigers make it 10 2. That was a shot, Jake. That was a shot. Uh, yeah. I mean, anytime you go dead center like that it really shows that you got some power you got some pop in that bat we knew that with josh pearson um but that's awesome man two home runs in one game they had him back at second yesterday by the way yeah yeah you know jay johnson one thing we we've learned about him he tinkers man he 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 goes at game by game he will change that lineup on a dime he will change where players are, are, are playing at in the, in the field on a dime. He does not. There's some coaches that are, like, reluctant to do that. He is not. Bottom line, they got to figure out a place to get Josh in the lineup on a day-to-day basis. Oh, absolutely. And also, you know, Milam's, you, you got to have him in there, too. I mean, Milam's the real deal. So, will Josh stay at second? I don't think so. I think he'll probably end up in the outfield, but we'll see. I mean, again, Jay Johnson could do this thing all year where he's just kind of mixing and matching. So the former West Monroe uh, slugger ends his day uh, three for three, two home runs, three RBIs, job well done. Then he still has plenty of time to get over and watch <laughs> West Monroe versus Catholic. Yeah. I wanted the storyline to be complete. I wanted John then to come up and, of course, have the game-winning hit. Fell Would've a little cool. short on that. What he was swinging a good stick yesterday, too, by the way. He had a couple way. hits. Yeah, yeah, he had a couple hits. So, uh, five home runs in all. Now uh, they'll take their cuts versus Stony Brook later today. What's the start time? For I think LSU? it's 2 o'clock. Okay. I think it's 2 o'clock. Uh, for uh, Louisiana Tech and ULM, both at home this weekend. Kent State making the trip to the Love Shack. This is actually the, the first ever matchup between these two programs. Mm. Well, they should get tested a little bit more than they got tested last week. I, I love the start from Louisiana Tech, but I'd like to see the pressure be put on them a little bit more 
and just see see what we got. I, I think the, the the veterans that have returned, it's got you excited. And again, boy, you started off the season hot, yeah. but I'd like to see them in some pressure situation to see how they respond. A couple things to look for in this series. Uh, Bates has a 27-game on-base yeah. streak going on. Tech at the plate last week, they struggled a little bit. They're just hitting a 241 as a team. Pitching staff carried them uh, last Pitching week. Staff, yeah. The Golden Flashes, you think about uh, Tech struggling a little bit at the plate. They're just hitting 212 on the season. Hmm. They had a series versus UNC Wilmington. Uh, the Warhawks also at home. They got uh, Murray State coming to the loot. Yeah, uh, Warhawks did start off great, but battled back to 2-2, two and two, back to 500. See how they fare this weekend. Yeah, big series for them to wrap up a homestead. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little uh, college football. There was some contract news and also more about the college football playoff. Let's start with the contract uh, news. It has been approved at uh, Mickey Joseph's deal with Grambling. So uh, he's going to make uh, 325 a year. Not too shabby. 200 of that coming from the university, another 125 from the foundation, the boosters. I thought what, what was most significant about this contract was the fact if he wins eight games in one of those first two seasons, then that kicks in the third-year extension. Yeah, I like that. Um, I thought that was interesting, too. Uh, he's not making near the money that old Hugh was making. No, but Hugh had a big name. I mean, Mickey Joseph's a, a, a pretty decent big name, too, I guess, but we're talking about a guy who's coming from the NFL. A little different. Uh, Joe's. <laughs> well, you, well, they, they, well, they, they ain't going out to lunch well, with you anytime well, soon. Well, they right? overpaid. Let's just just say it how it is. Yeah. He I, sold a bill of goods and well, he didn't deliver. Yes, but also, I think when a guy has that background, he's going to demand more money. What is background that not does he have? He, he lost. He was in the NFL. I know yeah, he lost. He, yeah, I get it. He, he struggled with the Browns, yes. but he still was a head coach yes. in the NFL. Yeah. He was a used car salesman. And look, I get, and I'm not saying that his time with the Grambling was great. We know it wasn't. <laughs> and obviously he did not endear himself to Grambling fans. Who did, he did, who, who did he endear himself with? I don't know. Maybe some players. He didn't even know the high school coaches. Yeah. yeah. No I'm not defending the guy. Okay. I'm just saying, yeah. man, you want to. No, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, Joe Sloan and Cortez Hankton, we've talked extensively about them being, quote, co-offensive coordinators. So uh, details of their contracts uh, have been released. Old Joe Sloan, man, he's doing all right for himself. Yeah, he is. So he gets a bump from $650,000, which is not chump change. No. To 950000 <laughs> Yeah, man. In the first year. This is a three-year deal. The second year, it goes up to a million. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, he's... I know they're co-offense coordinators, but it seems like Joe Sloan's first in line here. All right. The way that it's worded. He can take more credit. The way that it's worded. I think it's more on his shoulders. Hmm. So uh, let's keep our streak going. For the third day in a row, let's talk about the college football playoff. Did you see the fact that uh, now the NFL is not happy? No, I missed this. So uh, the opening rounds next year are slated to be played on uh, December 20th 20th, and 21st. The 21st is a Saturday. And that's when the NFL has Saturday games? I mean, how do they think they own that day? I didn't realize. I I kept hearing December 20th. That's a Friday? Friday, Saturday. I didn't realize that that was a two-day deal. I I, I kept thinking the 20th was a Saturday. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So, uh, week 16 for the NFL, and they've claimed Saturdays now because, you know, college football is supposed to be done or it's the bowl season. That's right. our day. Right. So, right. their feelings are hurt. Well, I, sh- listen, the NFL, granted, it is a college football playoff yeah. game, so it'll get good ratings, but the NFL's still going to outdraw them. What did they expect the college football playoff committee to consult with them? Well, they want to play Thursday, Friday? And it's just two games in the NFL, right? Yeah. It's, it's, that's a big nothing burger. All right. Well, NFL executives, I did hear they were also upset when we talked about that streaming deal between the likes of uh, Fox, ESPN, and uh, was it Peacock? I, I think Amazon ended up and getting the... The fact that they weren't consulted about that, too. Now, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. That their feelings were hurt. I thought this was interesting from yesterday. The SEC is looking to push signing day up the early signing period so 
when it comes to the early signing period, it's usually in the month of December. Well, they want to make the entire month of December a recruiting dead period mm. and move early signing day up two weeks closer to the start of the month. Uh, Greg Sankey told Yahoo Sports the reason for that is because of the playoffs. Like we just mentioned, they're going to start December 20th. Makes no sense to have early signing day right in the middle of December when you're having the best teams in the country prepare oh, yeah. for a playoff game. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, it didn't really And make you have s- more than four. You got 12 now. Right. It didn't really make sense before, but now the playoffs are moved up and you've got more teams involved, like Aaron was saying. Uh, this is what Sankey said. Putting signing day in the middle of December with playoff games no longer works. Moving it to early December, the Wednesday before championship games. So I guess before the uh, conference championship games. Well, that would put it right in the heart of uh, state championship games then for a majority of states. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a mess regardless. Um, but they don't care about that. This year the transfer portal opened up on December 4th, and the early signing day commenced just over two weeks later on December 20th. So at the same time, coaches are trying to keep their roster together and evaluate potential areas of need through the portal. They're also closing up the high school recruiting ranks and tying up any loose ends on that trail. Again, it's just too much for coaches to juggle, especially when you're talking about, you know, Lane Kiffin kind of spoke out about this last year saying his offensive coordinator came up with the entire offensive game plan because he was too busy recruiting. So, again, it, you talk about the value in bowl games. There's another reason why bowl games have kind of been effective. Yeah, just putting too much on these college coaches. You are. And, again, you, you've got to – I see why some – Coaches are now saying, yeah, I'll take that NFL lead. I was being sarcastic. Jake was not. <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, too much on these college coaches, especially what they're getting paid. Okay. Do you not agree that these – it's getting a little crazy? Just move it the early signing period in November. Then. That's End what they're November. trying to do. They're trying, well, they're trying to do it to early December, but they're like, yeah. hey, let's move this. A uh, big 7 o'clock hour coming up. We look forward to catching up with uh, Coach Shake. He'll give us his take on the high school and college game – Talk a little Louisiana Tech softball with Josh Taylor. We're back after this. Putin will pay an even steeper price. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's what President Biden says in a statement this morning, announcing more than 500 new sanctions on Russia, further punishing leader Vladimir Putin for his invasion of Ukraine two years ago tomorrow. Intended to close some gaps in the sanctions regime that Russia has so far been able to evade, particularly with respect to Russia's defense sector. Up until now, the Biden administration has tried to target Russia's economy, including capping oil prices and sanctioning central banks, and also enacting trade restrictions to block the flow of technology and Equipment that Russia's military uses. Fox's Jackie Heinrich at the White House. The sanctions the day after President Biden met with Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny's widow. To state the obvious, he was a man of incredible courage. And it's amazing how his wife and daughter are, are, are emulating that. The president and many others blame Putin for Navalny's death in prison a week ago. Now, Navalny's mother says she's finally seen his body, but claims Russia is considering a secret burial. Democratic Senate Leader Chuck Schumer is in Ukraine, pledging support before tomorrow's anniversary. The Senate approved $60 billion in new U.S. military aid, but that is stalled in the Republican-led House. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tells Fox they need the support to battle Russia. Our soldiers need, and our people, and at least all... This is the security of Europe. There are two Trump updates. The former president's lawyers have filed attempts to dismiss another criminal case, the one in Florida over classified documents, claiming he has presidential immunity. The same claim being made in a Trump attempt to get the federal election-related indictment thrown out. In New York, the judge who ruled the Trump organization committed fraud rejected an attempt to delay enforcement. They gave me a fine of $355 million for doing nothing wrong. The former president last night at a religious broadcaster's forum in Nashville. It's all a big hoax. The South Carolina Republican primaries tomorrow. Polls show a big Trump lead over Nikki Haley. America's listening to Fox News. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym for a while. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I used to get. Could be lower testosterone. Lower T. Yeah, I went through it a while back. Once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone. I got Nugenix Total T, and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that on TV. Is it for real? Oh, yeah. The patented key ingredient is something called Testafin, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference. 
difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again. At work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text BODY to 321321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total Tea, the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text BODY to 321321. That's BODY to 321. Good day to you. I'm Jennifer Andrews with your news update. Well, Monroe police have been cracking down on gangs. Monroe Mayor Friday Ellis and the police chief announcing more than 100 gang-related arrests over the past two and a half years. Mayor Ellis referred to a display of guns, saying they were used in crimes, and pointed out one used for shooting at police. Chief Vic Sorden says they worked with a number of agencies to target the most violent offenders. A West Monroe man has been charged with 500 counts a possession of child pornography under the age of 13. The Attorney General's office says they investigated Justin Sammons following a tip. Meantime, the special session on crime continues in Louisiana. A bill was approved to expand legal immunity for police, except in cases of criminal actions, fraud, or intentional misconduct. Critics say it gives police too much protection. Supporters say it still keeps them in check. It now heads to the Senate. Meantime, another bill would lower the age limit for juvenile offenders to be tried as an adult, and another bill would raise sentence guidelines for certain crimes. Meantime, family and community members gathered outside the Union Parish Courthouse yesterday before a hearing in the Ronald Green case. He died in state police custody following a chase that ended in Union Parish in 2019. However, the hearing was rescheduled for today. Former trooper Corey York is charged with negligent homicide and malfeasance in office. His attorney says he plans to plead not guilty. Meantime, an appeal to quash his charges was denied. His attorney argued York's right to self-incrimination was violated. Meantime, the Washtenaw Parish School Board has approved a bid to sell 300 acres of timber near Shinney Lake for $350,000. They say that money can be used to help students. And that's your news for now. I'm Jennifer Andrews for the Radio People. Good Friday to you. I'm meteorologist Don Wheeler. A beautiful day in store for our area as high pressure builds in behind a cold front that pushed through overnight. We will, however, continue to see above normal temperatures with yet another warming trend beginning Sunday. Today, sunny, high of 73. Tonight, clear skies, low 44. Saturday, sunny, high 72. We're only at the halfway point. There's still another hour of award-winning sports talk on deck. Thanks for making KMLB News Talk 105.7 and 540 AM a part of your day. The Morning Drive, your first look at the local sports stories from a pair of guys who set the bar at sports broadcasting. To join in on the conversation, call or text 324-1500. This hour of the Morning Drive is presented by Jeff Guerrero, the injury attorney, and by Sparks, Nissan, and Kia in Monroe. Now, let's talk sports. Here are Aaron and Jake. Good morning, Lord. Wow. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what was that? Oh, was that my like a gosh. dead frog? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jake Martin here in the Morning Drive. Sitting alongside Clay Parker. We threw, after his comments about Hugh Jackson, we threw Aaron out of the studio and brought in Clay. What's up, Clay? Good morning. Good, good to be here. Hey, I was going to ask you, what's worse, that or his rendition of Taylor Swift? Oh, it's Taylor Swift. You think so? Uh, Although the Taylor Swift was, was way more entertaining. It was way more entertaining. That's right. Yes. Well, Clay, I appreciate you jumping in, uh, finishing out this hour with us this Friday. We've got a ton to talk about, man. I, does your head just spin? At times like this, when it's like feels like every different sport's going on at the same time. Yeah, I told you a minute ago. I was kind of looking up the uh, tonight's matchups for the boys, yeah. and I mean, I ran out of paper trying to write them all down. It's crazy how many games you got tonight. College baseball, high school baseball, uh, high school softball's going in. I mean, there's so much going on right now. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. And let's just jump right in because it feels like we we we, we covered a lot of ground in the first hour. We got even more ground to co- uh, cover in this hour. Uh, kind of re-rack it for you if you're just joining us. College Hoops was was kind to this area last night. Uh, girls basketball, high school playoffs, not so much. So we'll start with the positive. ULM Hoops make it 7 out of 10. That's right. 
We were talking about this game going into last night, ULM hosting ULL, an opportunity for Bob Marlin to get 250 wins in the conference, and ULM denies it. ULM pulls off the 66-59 to victory in Fant Ewing. ULM did a great job of forcing turnovers. They forced 15 Raging Cajun turnovers, but really when you're looking for the reason for ULM success last night, it really came from defending that three-point line, the Cajun struggles. They shot just 18% from three-point range. They hit four of 22 from distance. And ULM able to pull off yet another big victory. Clay. Yeah, that's huge for them, uh, obviously, with the conference tournament coming up here shortly. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they're looking, looking a lot better. And Keith Richard said this after the game. It was a gritty win. I know it wasn't pretty at times by both teams, but I'm really proud of the way our guys kind of gutted that out. It was a really, really tough, pretty physical game. So ULM, like I said, makes it seven out of their last ten. Uh, Louisiana Tech remains in first place, sticking with the men. Uh, you know, you look at Chavez, what he did last night, game high 20 points. Uh, he hit four of nine from downtown. Crawford was, was great as well with 19 points, eight rebounds. They held UTEP to just 38.7% shooting from the field. Again, we talk about this Louisiana Tech defense and, and how well it travels. It traveled again last night. Louisiana Tech, another big victory and getting it done on the road against UTEP. They are improved to 19 and 8, 9 and 3 in Conference USA, and uh, they're, they're primed for a, a deep conference title run. And who knows, maybe we'll get uh, lucky and get in the tournament this year. Louisiana Tech women and ULM women also pick up wins last night to stay on the positive side. Plus, you had the New Orleans Pelicans back in action. They won 127 to 105. Clay, they're 34 to 22. When do you typically start to tune into NBA? Uh, I'm starting a little bit now. You know, now that the Super Bowl has passed, and uh, I'm co- I'm in I'm in the college baseball, and of course. Uh, you know, NBA as well. So uh, I'm starting to get into it a little bit. I watched some of the uh, slam dunk three-point last weekend. I heard y'all's comments earlier in the week, and I mostly agree with everything you said. But, uh, did you watch the All-Star game? I did not watch the All-Star right. game. I'm, I'm not a, I, I've watched it before. It's just – it's it's, it's it gets That's worse. the worst it's ever yeah, been. Yeah, I can't even say it. It just deteriorates a little bit every year. Yeah, the worst it's ever been, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't watch somebody that doesn't even try. It's not worth it. But uh, the three-point contest was very entertaining, especially when yeah. uh, Sabrina came out and challenged Steph. That was cool. And, you know, the dunk contest wasn't exceptional, but it was all right. And uh, anyway, but, yeah, I'm starting to get into it, especially I ramp it up even more as you get closer to the playoffs. Yeah, Zion had 27 points and nine assists last night in that victory for the Pels. Uh, we'll see. You know, look, they're 34 and 22. That being New Orleans, I think they're they got a good shot of not being in that that Final Four where you have to play in. Uh, if they can avoid that, that'd be a, a huge help for that team uh, going forward. Uh, the the not so good news last night. Well, girls basketball took a hit. Clay took we, a major hit. We took a hit. Yeah, we expected most of these games. I think uh, our local teams to lose. Bastrop probably being the one team that we felt like shocking. Yeah, yeah would uh, would win. They lost by four to Church Point, but uh, and of course we knew Wasman. We felt very strong that Wasman would win. We knew Cedar Creek against number one Southern Lab would be tough, but uh, yeah, so many close games. Uh, obviously, Claiborne Christian lost a, a tight one. Sterlington lost a tight one. Uh, just uh, Rustin, yeah, Rustin as well. Oak Grove lost the tight one, but again, that was too Arcadia, so we can still claim uh, a team there. But you know, the good news was Wasman living up to its potential. Sixty-seven, twenty-one victory, running <laughs> clock in that one. Denia Ross led the team with nineteen points. Uh, Brittany Burton added fourteen points. Or heading to the bench in the fourth quarter. They they just when Wasman gets going, when they start forcing those turnovers with its press, and they just make it look so easy. They're really, really fun to watch. They're on their way to, to a three-peat. Again, I've said this several times. If you've never heard the stat, it, it really is amazing. And I think Bears repeating. The last team from Washita Parish to go to do a three-peat back-to-back-to-back to back to back was Washita, and they actually won four in a row from 1936 to 1939. Wow. So this is a chance to, to join a league company. They're just two wins away from that. I don't have too many memories of that, uh, that run. <laughs> no, you there. don't. I don't, but uh, yeah, it's a, especially in today's day and age with so many schools playing basketball and the talent level there is, man. What Wasman's done has been sensational. You know what's interesting about that? 
six on six basketball. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I remember Gina had that great team like in the fifties and sixties. Yes, I've them. seen footage of that, and it was six. Yeah, it was a different a different sport. Six. six I think they zero. played what three on one side of the court and three on the other. I think. I, that, yeah, I think I think that's how they did it. But uh, yeah, three offensive players that couldn't cross half court and three right. defensive players. It's very it was, different game. Yeah, yeah. I think they went to five in like the seventies. I was thinking that too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, just kind of interesting looking. That's a looking question for Jack Thigpen next time. Y'all get him on. Yeah, around. yeah. I'm, I'm sure he'll have some, some stories from that. But, but like we mentioned, overall, you know, the girls basketball took a hit. Got two teams remaining in the air with Wasman or Arcadia still chasing a state title. Clay, uh, sh- should we be concerned about the way this year has started in terms of state championships? And <laughs> yeah, especially for Washita Parish. Obviously, you extend it to northeast Louisiana. We've done a little bit better yeah. with, obviously, Ruston and Oak Grove, Oak Grove and Union winning football state championships. But, yeah, specifically for you, I was like, man, poor Jake didn't make it to the Dome this year. And, uh, of course, you've got Wasman alive this year. But, uh, and of course, the boys' side, we'll see what happens. Not a lot of, like, really strong contenders outside of maybe Carroll, Wasman, and Ravel. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been kind of a little bit of a down year uh, this area, uh, this year, rather, for area teams. It's always cyclical. But you hey, got look, baseball. Ba- I must say baseball, and baseball is looking very promising. And, in fact, we're about to take a timeout. We'll be joined by Coach Jeff Sheck Snyder next, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick his brain because he was actually on the call for West Monroe Catholic last night. He'll join us next. Aaron's putting the bets in. Jake's laying down the law. And that's the bottom line. And Alan continues to hit the buttons. The Morning Drive will be right back after this break. And Doug. With Liberty Mutual, you can customize and save hundreds on your car insurance. But what to buy with those savings? Yep, I bought a sound effects machine. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Savings may vary underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates excludes Massachusetts. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Your pet isn't just a pet. They're part of your family. Most of the pet food on the market is cooked at high temperatures, which kills nutrients. A scoop of Dynavite is a three-in-one daily supplement, adding back key nutrients to your pup's health. Try Dynavite for free. Just pay shipping and handling. Learn more at D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com slash radio. That's Dynavite dot com slash radio. Happier, healthier with every bite. Over a million pets helped with Dynavite. Congratulations, you're having a little girl. At that moment, everything changed. We got life insurance policies from Shelter Insurance, so that regardless of what life throws at us, we'll still be able to provide the world to her. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Hey, everybody. Landon Williams here with Shelter Insurance. Call me today about Shelter's auto, home, and life options for a free personal protection review. When everything changes for you, call me, 318-322-0171. Hey, sports fans, it's game time, and Marion State Bank is your trusted financial teammate and your home base for all things banking. Rooted in our community, we proudly support local athletics. Marion State Bank. Rooted in local athletics. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Growth, efficiency, professionalism, qualified staff. It's what all healthcare facilities are aspiring for, and that is what we do. Legacy Rehabilitation, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy solutions for a wide variety of healthcare facilities, including acute care hospitals, inpatient rehab, long term care facilities, and outpatient therapy clinics. Whether you have staffing, management, or consulting needs, Legacy is awaiting your call. Call 318 255 5980 for more information or visit legacyrehab.net. Legacy Rehabilitation. Experience the best in patient care from the Surgery Clinic of Northeast Louisiana and Delta Vein Care. Using the latest in technology, their highly trained and knowledgeable physicians perform bariatric weight loss surgery, general surgical procedures, vein treatment, and more. Their goal is to provide compassionate, advanced care with minimal pain and recovery time. 
Reach your weight loss goals and live your healthiest life when you choose the Surgery Clinic of Northeast Louisiana and Delta Vein Care. Call to schedule your consultation today. Hi, folks. This is Raiden at East Firestone, where our top prices are buzzing. Brakes, $39.95. Tune up, $69.95. And funding alignments for $89.95. So, folks, if you don't want to get stung by high top prices, come on down to East Firestone for the best top prices in town. If you're seeing green in your lawn this time of year and you did not plant ryegrass, it is weeds. It's annual pole hen bit and a few other weeds. We use St. Augustine Weed and Feed. It has atrazine in it, great fertilizer and weed killer for this time of year, but wet the yard down before you apply it. Also, it's time to mulch your flower beds to try to keep the weeds down, and we have plenty of square bale pine straw, regular round bale pine straw, and a brand new product, a dyed pine straw in a roll. And it will hold its color for a year. Sunny Penzuco's Garden Mart. We're here for you. From high school football to the UFC and beyond, Aaron and Jake have got you covered for sports news. Now, let's join in on the conversation from the Marion State Bank Studio. We live where you live. Welcome back. Quentin helping us out on the Landon Williams Shelter Insurance text line. Girls basketball went from six to five players in 1971. Yeah, I thought it was the 70s, so. There you go, 1971 is when that change happened. Hey, joining us now on the Land of Williams Shelter Insurance Hotline is Coach Jeff Sheck Snyder. Coach Sheck, what's going on, man? Hey, hey, nothing much. Glad to have, be on. Man, we're happy to have you. Uh, first off, how'd you spend three hours with that Gene Pony guy last night? Well, we didn't even get to talk. We were so into the game. <laughs> I didn't even know he was there. We, we skipped a couple innings just watching. It was a heck of a game, and uh, I enjoy working with Gene. He does a great job, and a uh, good friend of mine. And two Catholic High graduates at Catholic High. Our kids went to West Monroe, or going to West Monroe, and uh, <laughs> it was a fun night. Yeah, y'all did a great job, of course, uh, calling the game on 92.7 last night. And I got to ask you first off, you know, William Schmidt, he, he walked it off last night. We're talking about a kid that touches 96 for Catholic on the bump. I'm assuming he was as good as advertised for you last night. He was. Uh, you know, it's one of the best high school arms I've seen, and I've done it for a long time. I compare him to kind of like uh, in 99 we played Sulphur, and Jess uh, Daigle, uh, he ended up playing in the big leagues for a while. I forget his first name, but he uh, he pitched against us in the semis, I think, and he was that type guy that was very tough, and we had to have an era to get to beat them guys. And uh, he was – he was impressive, to say the least. And when he got rolling, I think the third or fourth inning, maybe the fifth, he had, I don't know, six strikeouts and seven batters against a good hitting West Monroe team. Yeah. And uh, he got stronger as the game went on. I think that was Casey Daigle, if that's the right Casey, coach. Casey, that's right. Casey Daigle. Well, yeah, and look, this is why I was excited to talk to you, Coach, because, I mean, you've been around baseball a very long time. How many high, How many high school baseball games have you been a part of where – both lineups feature, you know, at least three straight Division One kids in a row. That's that's kind of what made last night so intriguing to the rest of the state. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, the Barb teams in West Monroe and the, uh, our team in 98, 99 uh, had a lot of good players. I mean, when I first got to West Monroe, Barb had uh, Johnny Thibodeau, uh, the shortstop Lawrence. Uh, they had, I think, four guys get drafted on the infield so wow. there was uh some talent back there too but this one was uh super impressive and to see the division one not just division one players the signees in the sec and uh to watch them battle and it was a battle you know uh pearson got two hits off their pitcher and then he came up and he struck out and uh it was uh it was a battle. You could tell the guys, they stepped up their game in front of those scouts in the big game atmosphere. And you could speak to this from experience. Are, are you able to enjoy it when you have a roster that talented? What's it like managing a team with all oh. that talent? Like, how, how do you handle the pressures that come along with it? And are those some of the more difficult years to be a coach? No. <laughs> what about all like that? They, uh, they make you a good coach. You know, I could call a game with Brian West pitching and call a fastball in, he throws it away, strike three, because uh, they had so much talent to overcome our mistakes. But, uh, no, it's a, it's a joy to get to coach those and to see all the scouts and interact and uh, all the games seem big because you're trying to, uh, you know, back then we didn't have PowerPoint. 
points and all that. You're trying to win a district and get a seed, and for the, you know, the top team in the district got a better draw than the, if you came in second. So it was uh, it was fun. No, I loved it, and I was fortunate to have a couple years like that. Hey, Coach, you've uh, had a lot of success on both high school and college levels. How do you compare the games when you're there? Of course, you, you know, get a chance to, to call the games, but what's the main differences for you as a manager or as a coach between uh, college, the college game and the high school game? Well, I think uh, not much difference. The game hasn't changed. I, you know, we did the same things that – ULM that we did at West Monroe, it's just uh, it's baseball. But you get a little more time to work on things in college. Uh, you got year-round, uh, so you can add stuff to your system, and they can learn it a little quicker. You know, in high school, when you, you get them for just uh, the spring, it'll take two or three years for them to learn your system and not just learn it, believe in it, but the small ball. And, uh, you know, you got to be able to play defense in both levels, but it seems like there's a lot more button and stuff like that in high school where uh, it'll cost you if you can't play defense. And I thought, uh, you know, that was what's going to lose or win the game last night. And Catholic shortstop, who's a good player, made an error, let West Monroe go up one. West Monroe kind of early in the year had opportunities in the, for the three innings, lead off man on and got him in scoring position. Couldn't get that timely hit. And Rightfully so, pitching, you know, we talked about the starters last night, but the depth of pitching, that's one difference, but I see that I didn't see in high school till now was the depth of pitching last night, how they would pitch matchups, bring a left hand. I don't know how many pitchers they went through in the game, but each team had to go through at least four or five. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to ask you, too. I mean, we talked a lot about Schmidt, but what were some other big takeaways from last night? Obviously, this is a matchup between two nationally ranked squads. I tell you what, there were two could have been game winning plays on defense, you know, that were uh, unbelievable. That's a, that's a sign of a great uh, team. I think Federico came across the diamond, passed the pitcher's mound, made a play against one of their fast, their center fielder, and threw him out. At, I mean, huge part of the game. Their second baseman uh, made a play. I thought it was a Base hit up the middle, looking to watch the guy around in third. Now I look up and he throws the guy out at first. And then the unsung heroes like the nine hole for Catholic got the big hit to tie it. Then he got a lead off walk in the uh, ninth or tenth, whatever it was. And uh, West Monroe the same thing. It's just uh, it was just a fun, great high school game, and kind of was better than anticipated, really. Coach, I thought one of the big parts of the game was that top of the six when West Renault, I think Halsey led off with a walk. Federico got a single. It looked like you know the meat of the order was up, and, and they couldn't convert and score a run. I really thought that was one of the turning points of the game last night. That was huge. And uh, not only that, I think the next batter uh, ended up striking out, but he had a wild pitch. So we had second and third with no out. And I think they struck the side out at that point. Uh and that was, and then the next inning, the same thing. I think we got a leadoff guy on, moved him. But you saw the typical baseball stuff. Uh, couldn't bunt him over one time. Tried to bunt him over, uh, and just things like that that happen that you have to overcome or or cost you. And uh, I think that those three innings where they had opportunities to score end up costing them before that last inning. And yeah, coach, obviously we're gonna get a lot of time to to pick your brain over uh, this baseball season, but. Before we let you go, I, I did want to get your early thoughts on ULM and I, I guess more specifically this new pitching strategy the Warhawks are using. Who knows how many pitchers will end up seeing take the bump this year? Well, that's a good thing when you got depth and you're able to do that. Uh, I think they're, uh, you know, I got to, I watched them on a, uh, what, the radio, listen to the games, and I keep up with them a lot when I'm not there. But, uh, you know, I think they're going to be solid. I think they got some good veterans. Nowadays with the portal, the more players you have that have bought into your system that but buy in the ULM that have been a part of it uh, seems to help. You know, LSU had some great transfer portals last year, but I think the glue were the three- and four-year, five-year guys that they had that step up when there's adversity. Uh, when there's no adversity, it's great. But when it's adversity, you got to have those veterans. you got to have those guys that are there. Uh, that's where they want to be, and they can help the team overcome that. And I think uh, Fed does a great job. 
I think that they got those veterans along with some newcomers that are very talented, and uh, I think you'll see some good things out there. Awesome. Coach, looking forward to having you on regularly this season. Appreciate your time this morning. You got it. Thank you all for – I love talking baseball with you guys or anyone, but thanks for having me, and uh, you guys do a great job. I love listening to you. Thanks, Coach. That's Coach Shake, and uh, hopefully we we make this a a regular thing this year. Love picking his brain on all things baseball. Yeah, he'll be back on the air tonight with Gino, uh, 445, 92.7, and then, of course, tomorrow uh, at noon, it's, I think, 1145. Uh, for the pregame uh, down in uh, Catholic is uh, the the Bears host West Monroe. That's right. I feel like it, the game last night only kind of forces more people to go, hey, that went nine innings, four to three. I know. I got to check out game two of this one. Yeah, it was such a, a wonderful experience last night. I listened to most of the game, but, man, what, what an atmosphere. It was great, too. He mentioned You mentioned ULM. Coach Fed was able, got a chance to go down and watch his son play. Of course, uh, Josh Pearson got a chance to, after hitting two home runs for LSU, yeah. got to drive up and watch his brother play. So it was a uh, – very cool atmosphere. No doubt. All right, let's take a time out. We return. We'll dive into some more high school baseball news and notes and uh, touch on some hoops as well. We'll be right back. Talking sports can be a tough job. Make this job and show. So we're going to take a break. Yee-hoo. We'll be right back with the best sports show in Louisiana Yee-hoo. in just a moment. Hello, I'm Lauren Guerrero. My father is Jeff Guerrero. You may know him as the injury attorney. If you or a loved one have been injured or are a victim of medical negligence, call my father, Jeff Guerrero. The insurance companies have attorneys and adjusters working hard for them. You need Jeff Guerrero working hard for you. For personal, local representation, call Jeff Guerrero, 325-4306. 2200 Forsyth Avenue, Monroe, Louisiana, 71201. 325-4306. Randall Garvin's Captain Avery Seafood and Specialty Meats is now open. Two incredible and delicious institutions now under one roof. Fresh cut steaks, stuffed meats, and wraps. He's got fresh seafood of every kind along with boiled shrimp, barbecue ribs, sausage, and chicken. Plus, there's always grab-and-go dishes if you're not cooking. Randall's is also taking ham and turkey orders for the holidays. Randall's Captain Avery Seafood and Specialty Meats, one block off 165 at 2607 for Rand and Monroe. North Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic is the official sports medicine provider for ULM and La Tech Athletics. The experts at the North Louisiana Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic are focused on one thing, continuing the highest quality health care available in North Louisiana. Their 14 surgeons in Monroe, West Monroe, and Ruston offer the most up-to-date, specialized care in minimally invasive techniques in spine, total joint replacement, hand and upper extremity, foot and ankle surgery, and sports medicine. Visit NorthLAOrtho.com. Arr, folks, this is right in the fire stone, but we have the best fire prices in town. Right, $39.95. Tune up, $69.95, and front end alignment for $89.95. So if you don't want to walk the plank, come to Ink Fire Stone for the best fire prices in town. Hi, I'm William Sparks at Sparks Nissan Kia in Monroe. If you're looking for a top quality pre owned vehicle, come see us. Every pre owned vehicle on our lot is Sparks certified by our factory trained technicians, so you can drive with confidence. And we've got a huge selection of trucks. Four Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, nearly every make and model, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, gas, diesel, and heavy duty. Don't buy a pre-owned vehicle just anywhere. Be sure to come see us at Sparks Nissan Kia Monroe or online at drivesparks.com. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Hey, everybody, Landon Williams here with Shelter Insurance. Call me today about Shelter's auto, home, and life options for a free personal protection review. When everything changes for you, call me, 318-322-0171. Championship sports coverage from Louisiana's best sports duo. Aaron and Jake are back for another round on the morning drive from the Marion State Bank Studio. Take it away, guys. Welcome back to the morning drive. It is a busy season. We're talking baseball, softball, girls basketball. Hey, by the way, boys basketball, their playoffs begin tonight, Clay. Man, there's yeah, so many teams playing this opening round. A few teams have already played, and a couple, several of them have buys, but there are a lot of great matchups tonight. Well, let's go through some of those matchups, Clay. You started jotting it down. I don't want that good work to go to, to waste here. 
Give us some of these yeah. uh, matchups. Let's start off. Uh, Rustin host uh, Barb. Rustin, the eight seed. Uh, you know, come on. Had a slow start with a lot of guys playing football, but they've played well. You know, a couple up and down losses, but uh, come in the eight seed tonight. Host I'll Barb. say this, and it's kind of hard to call them a dark horse when they, you know, obviously they've had a lot of success recently, and they look pretty darn good in spots this year. But as an eight seed, I would hate to see that. You know, if I'm the number one seed, like, dang, that's a tough draw. You know, being on that side of the bracket, having to see a team that good that early. But obviously, first things first, they got to take care of business tonight. Yeah, they would face uh, Zachary if they if it gets that far in the quarterfinals. Uh, West- Zachary is going to be ticked off after <laughs> not getting to play last year. That that's a, I, I hate that draw for Rustin, but also I think. If you're a Zachary fan, you're like, God, Rustin's way better than an eight seed. That's right. That's right. Of course, West Renault, number 21, they travel down to 12. Mandeville, it's a 6 o'clock uh, tip-off there. That's another team that can make some noise. I really think that. You know, West Renault had, had some trouble closing out some games this year, but they're deep, they're athletic, they're long. They, they're a, a, a group of players that have a lot of continuity. You know, they returned a lot of guys from last year, and there were some spots. Like, when they played at Washita. That was their best game of the year because they, they were phenomenal throughout. They, they played their best brand of basketball for a full 40 minutes. And I think if you get more of those type of performances, Clay, I think they can make a run. I agree. Uh, Neville, 14 C, they host uh, 19 Sam Houston. That's, That's where I'll be tonight. I'm excited for it. Yeah, 630 tip off there. And, of course, Washita. I haven't looked this up. This has got to be the one of the lowest seeds they've had in a long, yeah, long time. Yeah, it, it's, it's so unusual to see Washita – that low on the bracket absolutely um but another team you know that was young this year trying to break into new guys not just young players but inexperienced players and they've shown you what they're capable of they beat rustin this year and so i mean don't sleep on them they're still that's a lot of tradition in that program yeah they go to number seven slidell uh today you got franklin parish uh hosting cecilia franklin parish being the eighth seed uh, of course, a lot of our teams, like I mentioned, uh, Carroll has a bye this week, and Wasman does as well. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, non-select Division Three, we've got a lot of teams playing there. Of course, Sterlington has to travel to Ville Platte. There's 17 versus 16 right there. There was a, there was a little bit of confusion. I think Sterlington thought that they were going to host that game, and there was some confusion about power points and something to do with Class B and Class C teams that, uh, got a little muddy, but anyway, now they're having to hit the road, and they're not going to get a home game. So that's unfortunate for that Sterlington squad. But I, I think if you've been listening to the show, you you realize how good Cooper Nelson is, and you know KJ Johnson's really good too. But I'm I'm curious to see how he performs on a big stage in the playoffs. I know they were a little disappointed with how things uh, shaped out last year, so anxious to see what he does this year. You got number three, Winfield. They're on by. They face the winner of uh, Gina and Rose Pine, the 14 19 seed. That should be an interesting game there. Uh, Richwood at seven. They host uh, 26 Union Parish. Well, and again, I, I, I think there's obviously there's a lot of familiarity there, two teams in the same district. Um, but Richwood, when you talk about the size and the length and the, the athleticism of that team, they can make a long run. They really do have, you know, Xander Washington and those guys, they really do have some good players. Don't be surprised to see Richwood making a long run. And your Vidalia Vikings, 18 C, they travel to 15 Caldwell Parish, and of course yeah. the winner of that gets the uh, fun task of traveling to Ravel. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Next week as well. Uh, so Ravel really, by the way, Ravel kind of had a sluggish start this year, uh, especially compared to Ravel standards, but they really turned it on in district play. Yeah, I'll we'll go through these kind of quick. Uh, Faraday hosts uh, East Feliciana, 16 17. Arcadia, the 9 C, they host uh, 24 East Beauregard. Um, and, of course, uh, Delhi beat Oak Grove. That's one of the few games I mentioned they already played. Uh, of course, and then Jonesboro Hodge travels to Franklin. Uh, Block hosts Haynesville. And then, of course, I also want to mention some of the um, um, non uh, excuse me, select uh, matchups tonight, uh, yeah. Jake. Uh, OCS travels to 14 Sacred Heart. Uh, Cedar Creek is number 11. They go to Riverside there and then of course st fred's they have a bye this week i think st fred's comes in at the eight seed yeah that's and, right there's uh, eight buys and and non select or select i should say uh division four uh, ocs has got an interesting one there um one of the more athletic ocs teams they've had recently especially when you look at tate hamby with the alley oops that, that they've had all season long 
Yeah, and then, of course, in that, that uh, non-select Division Five, Shudrant, the 14 seed, they host uh, Reeves, 19 uh, there. And then we've got, uh, of course, Doyleen Castro, Simsboro, they won the other night. So a lot of games in the area tonight uh, all around North Louisiana with uh, North Louisiana teams. So I, I play handicapped it for us, man. We, we've been – Play yeah. and I, I mean, uh, Aaron and I set it at two and a half. It's for, we combine girls and boys for state champions. Are, are you going over? I, I guess you get kind of a cheat here because you know we've only got two girls left. Yeah. Not that they were expecting a bunch from the girls' side, but how, how do you handicap Yeah, on the boys' side, i I got to feel confident that either uh, Wasserman or Carroll is going to walk away with the state championship. They'll meet in the semifinals if, if, if the uh, bracket holds to form. Well, listen. I hope we get that matchup, and I think we will. But for those of you who have paid attention to that bracket, there's a chance, and it'll happen. Bozier's coming to Carroll yeah, in the quarterfinals. And Bozier's one of those teams as a six seed that you just wanted to avoid. If you were one of those top four seeds, you didn't want – you wanted one of the other teams to, to get Bozier. Unfortunately for Carroll, they'll have to rematch Bozier. Obviously, that was the state championship game last year. But – they have to go to Carroll. So there's a really big advantage for the Bulldogs. But, yes, I, I don't want to, you know, just say automatically we're getting that matchup uh, just because Bows are still in the way. But I still feel good about Carroll advancing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mentioned Rabel a minute ago. I think they have a chance to, to make a run. I, I didn't mention Madison, the 5C. They host a meet. Madison's a very good ball club. Yeah. Well, Lincoln Prep is another one. They're, uh, they have a bye tonight. They're, they're the 5 seed. Uh, they could make a run as well. So All think, right, so come on. Over I'm, under two and a half. I'm gonna go under. Yeah. So I think I, I think two. You. I think two is where we're gonna be at. So. Well, well, hold on now. We're doing two and a half with with girls and boys. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Washburn girls, and then I'm I'm gonna say the Washburn. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say two just because there's always a chance one of those teams could slip up. I do think there's a chance, like I just mentioned, that a, a Ravel, a Lincoln Prep, a Madison, a Winfield, one of those. Could pull it. If we can't win field, you know, the three C, they could they could do some damage. <laughs> I appreciate the candor, by the way. There you go. It, it hasn't been a, a banner year for basketball for us, but hey, we, we've got some dogs in the hunt. We'll see how they yeah. fare tonight. The Wasman girls, man, that's uh, <laughs> that's, a that's good one. that almost makes up for everything as good as they are. It's a layup. Feels Slam like it. dunk. Uh, I'm knocking on wood for you, Otis. I don't mean to to give you the old announcer's jinx. I mean, uh, 67 21 last night. Yeah, I know, what can I you know. say about that? It's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Yeah, by the way, if you're just joining us, that, that was one of the big headlines 67 uh, 21. A lot of teams were upset last night, but when you've got to run a clock in the third quarter of a quarterfinals game, and I, I was watching it, Bruley is not a bad team. Like, in fact, I was watching Bruley warm up, and I was like, dang, it's one of the more impressive teams I've seen this year, uh, just because, you know, I. I we, we've talked about it. Girls basketball has been down a little bit in the area. And uh, to see Wasman just do what they do, they, they put so much pressure on you with that full court press. And Brittany Burton's down a low block. And she just, if you're able to beat the press, she turns you away. I mean, it's just, it's so tough to beat. I was convinced when that first matchup against Bastrop. Bastrop was like 28 0. And uh, I mean, very good ball team. Of course, they lost a heartbreaker last night. But what Wasman did to them in both games they played them. It's just unbelievable. I huh? thought it would be – I thought they'd be closer games. I never thought, like, Bastrop's going to beat Wasman because we saw it in the playoffs. Like, we saw it, obviously, yeah. in the district two. But we saw it in the playoffs a year ago, and it's like Wasman returned pretty much everybody. It just – Wasman is that good. They just are. And so that's why we feel confident they have a great chance of, of winning another state title. I wanted to mention this again real quick. Uh, LSU baseball did play yesterday. They hit five home runs, and Josh Pearson hit two of them. Uh, so it's great to see Josh Pearson not only hitting his first home run of the season, but also his second. And uh, they will play against Stony Brook uh, this afternoon. And uh, on the softball side, obviously, you know, baseball, softball getting kicked off this weekend uh, for, for Louisiana Tech and, and ULM. But we'll have an opportunity to talk with Josh Taylor, Louisiana Tech head or softball coach next on the morning drive. He'll join us. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Aaron and Jake need a Red Bull break. Stay tuned for more of the state's award-winning sports coverage coming up. Daryl Strawberry played Major League Baseball for 17 seasons. 
He won numerous awards, made a fortune, and a lot of mistakes. Dale discovered that being a wealthy celebrity could create enormous problems. Major League Baseball suspended this talented slugger on three different occasions because of substance abuse. He went through two divorces and was estranged from his children. In his book, Turn Your Season Around, he wrote, When I post photos on social media of myself when I was incarcerated, I'm not proud of my past. In many ways, it is amazing that he survived. There was a time in his life when he had given up and did not care. His book, Turn Your Season Around, explains how he got his life together. Recovery has not been easy, but he is using his scars to help others become well. Daryl found a way to get his life together. We can too. This is Pastor Brian Mercer, and these are perceptions of First Methodist Monroe. Hello, I'm Lauren Guerrero. My father is Jeff Guerrero. You may know him as the injury attorney. If you or a loved one have been injured or are a victim of medical negligence, call my father, Jeff Guerrero. The insurance companies have attorneys and adjusters working hard for them. You need Jeff Guerrero working hard for you. For personal, local representation, call Jeff Guerrero, 325-4306. 2200 Forsyth Avenue, Monroe, Louisiana, 7 321-325-4306. This is Robbie at America Mattress Salad. Tax refund time is here, and you may have some extra money in your pocket. Don't blow it. Invest it in something that matters yourself. At American Mattress Salad, we can help you stretch that refund to get the maximum investment on your purchase. We will have king size for a queen size price and queen size for a full size price specials all month long. Plus, Queen Euro Top sets as low as $5.99. American Mattress Outlet in Washington Owen Ruston, where you don't have to go into debt to get a great night's sleep. Growth, efficiency, professionalism, qualified staff. It's what all healthcare facilities are aspiring for, and that is what we do. Legacy Rehabilitation, offering physical, occupational, and speech therapy solutions for a wide variety of healthcare facilities, including acute care hospitals, inpatient rehab, long term care facilities, and outpatient therapy clinics. Whether you have staffing, management, or consulting needs, Legacy is awaiting your call. Call 318 255 5980 for more information. Information or visit LegacyRehab.net. Legacy Rehabilitation. Hello, this is Jonathan Washam, former Louisiana Tech and OCS slugger. My playing days are over, but I'm always looking to help out a teammate. As your local shelter insurance agent, I promise to be there for you in your time of need. I pledge to give you the best coverage along with the unmatched service. To team up with the top shelter insurance agent in North Louisiana, call me at 318-387-4068. Spa Nouvelle in Monroe offers a variety of services to give you a first-class spa experience. Combining beauty, comfort, knowledge, and personalized attention to ensure you have a memorable visit. Spa Nouvelle offers massage services, facial treatments, and more. Book a package for yourself or pick up a gift card for that special someone in your life at SpaNouvelle.com. Spa Nouvelle, located at 1705 Lammy Lane in Monroe. Call today, 816-4949. That's 816-4949. It's the Ken Fletcher Show. It's about money and more. The Ken Fletcher Show has a renewed focus for 2024. Entering our 43rd year now of service to clients and friends, we'll cut some chat and focus more on that, which will help you ignite your wealth. You can't accumulate too much wealth. If you do, we'll teach you how to give some away. Mondays at 5, Thursdays at 8, right here. Getting you back to the action. Here's more hard-hitting sports news on the morning drive from inside the Marion State Bank studio. Welcome back to the morning drive. Joining us now, the Landon Williams Shelter Insurance Hotline is Louisiana Tech head softball coach Josh Taylor. Coach, what's going on, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Man, we're doing good. We're doing good. First things first, coach. No more Lady Texers going with Bulldogs. Do we like it? Are we used to it yet? Uh, used to it. Uh, like it. It, it. You know, it's hard for me to have an opinion on that. I don't. I haven't been. You know, coming from the West Coast and from the university. You know, from that side, and I, 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 I kind of just go with the flow on those things. I, gotcha. um, I, I understand the history. I do get. I get it. I understand all that. I, and. and you know, so I, I agree with the, the folks that don't like it, and then I understand the student athletes and what they want. So I, I agree with them as well. So I, I'm, I'm neutral on the whole thing. I wanted to ask you about it because we still slip up and say Lady Texters. It just takes 
us a while to kind of break that habit. Uh, but I got to ask you, man, the offensive numbers that y'all been putting up, especially this Lindenwood uh, performance that y'all had, you broke so many Conference USA records in that 28-2 victory. W- were there any points in that game that you kind of found yourself in disbelief at what was taking place? Uh, yeah, for a lot of different reasons. I mean, the, the the first inning and then into the second inning in particular. I mean, just the amount of walks that were being issued, and, and <laughs> yeah, uh, it, and it was it was you know I was proud of our kids for you know staying there at bats. I mean, we talked to them about not giving them away, and we certainly didn't give any away that day. And, and I think that it, it was just relief on a lot of different fronts, mainly on you know what was going on in the other dugout. To be to be quite honest with you, as far as pitching usage and how they were leaving a kid out there that was you know, walk, allow, allow somebody to walk 16 hitters isn't in my vocabulary and as far as a head coach is you know, yeah, it, concerned. We, we, we spent a lot of time talking about that because it was unique. I don't, I, we couldn't really recall another time we had seen that. Had you ever seen anything like that? I haven't. That was the first thing I was, you know, in the moment I was actually talking to my assistant coaches and I'm like, I have never seen anything like this. Yeah. Crazy. And I was trying to remember, you know, think back of when I was a player on how I would have felt if I was, you know, a position player, more or less that pitcher, on, you know, on what I was witnessing happening as far as a, a competitive nature of it to, to to try to, you know, my, our goal is to win every game we play, and so I, I wasn't quite, I was I was confused. Yeah, I think a lot of us were. I think a lot of us were. But look, the offensive numbers speak for itself. I mean, through seven games this season, y'all have outscored opponents. 62 to 19. Y'all totaled 66 hits, 17 doubles, six homers. I saw y'all have also homered in five consecutive games. Is this kind of what you had in mind at the start of the year in terms of returning offensive production? Well, yes, and 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 but I also you know knew what we needed to improve on from a year ago. I mean, we're still strong in the circle as well, and and you know if we would have you know been able to have been better last year offensively, I think last year could have been a whole different different story. So. We really worked hard in the off season to improve those offensive numbers, and we really, you know, this, the players really worked hard all fall in the off season as well to make sure that, you know, we were able to bring a level of consistency to a quality of a bat every single time, every single time they went up the bat. And we're getting production off our bench. We're deep, uh, um, so very pleased with you know where we've started on the offensive side. And coach on the pitching side, you've got a great one-two combo. Uh, Brooke and Allie are both pitching outstanding this year. Talk about them and the impact they're having on your teams thus far. Just, just real mature kids that that just work. I mean, they got great stuff. They've come, you know, they used their summertime properly. They came back in the fall just in great shape. They they've maintained that shape right up until now, and you know they increased their velocity two to three miles an hour, which was impressive over the off season as well, and so. Just seeing them, their their maturity with with Ali only being a you know a, a sophomore and and Brooke only being a junior, it's been really encouraging to watch their progression over the last three years. You know, two years with Ali and three with Brooke, and see Brooke come back from the injury that she had a week before the first game in her first year. It's been it's been fun to watch and, and to to watch them actually learn how to pitch and sequence pitches and work to their strengths and understand how to get hitters out has been real fun. I thought this was an interesting nugget, too, Coach. Claire Rayleigh leads you all with three home runs, and she's just one shy of her single-season high of four. Uh, what improvements has she made to lead to her fast start? We've worked a lot on what her strengths are as well. I mean, she's she's our leadoff hitter. I mean, it's impressive in that spot as well. I mean, when, we, when you look at – if she can stay connected and, 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 and when she stays together, she's an extremely strong kid, and, and she's been able to do that. and She's been able to find barrel. I mean, she's, she's a dynamic player, and we, we've, you know, I don't know if you've seen her play yet, but she's, she's a lot of fun to watch run the bases as well. So it's just, it's just a series of adjustments over the course of the fall on how to bring out each, you know, player's strengths and, and let them use their talents to their best ability and then sending them out there to play. I mean, she's done a great job of, 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 of creating more backspin, where when she first, we first got her, she was kind of like a top spin. She top spin a lot of balls, so we've been able to kind of teach her how to backspin balls, and she's really ran with it and done a great job. Coach, you've also done a great job of recruiting local talent here. You know, a couple of girls from Cedar Creek, including Lauren Manzina, who's also one of your key pitchers. A couple of girls from Sterlington, and of course Carly Sellers, a freshman, who's uh, made an impact on your team this year. Talk about the importance you do on trying to keep some local kids, uh, you know, at uh, recruited to come play for Tech. 
it's really important to us. I mean, we want to work from the inside out when we recruit. And finding players like, you know, Carly and having Cooper and Lauren. Lauren pitched extremely well down at UL on, on Tuesday night. And and when you look at, you know, having that local local talent here, it, it just it's really important to us to make sure that we know all of our local talent, whether it's Ruston, whether it's Monroe, whether it's just Louisiana, we keep the best players. We try to keep get the best players in the state to stay home and stay and, and come to Tech. And it's really, you know, Carly's had a great progression uh, leading up to now, and she's just a pure hitter, and she's going to have a lot of success in her future. And we have, you know, Allie Furs here, and she's, she's going to redshirt this year, and she's going to be very, you know, we have another kid, Emma Brown, out of, out of um, – Sterlington. Monroe area, or Sterlington, I believe, yes. And she, she's doing very well. And, and she's red-shirting as well. So, you know, you're going to continue to see that local talent shine here at, at Louisiana Tech with, with softball, and we're, we're excited about them. I mean, we, we're really excited about them. And there's a lot of talent around here. We just got to make sure we know who they are. And, you know, we're going to win some of those battles, and we're going to lose some, And you know, th- but we're going to recruit them. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's great. It, you know, obviously on paper it hasn't really affected you or six and one, but I was curious when you when, when weather has an, an impact on you and you, you have to cancel the first three games against St. Louis to, to start the season, did that put you behind at all? What what kind of impact did that have? It, it it impacted us a little bit in the moment. They just were so anxious to get started that that they just you know they they were getting frustrated a little bit. But once we kicked it off. You know, we started to run, and it was really nice here that we were able to play that Monday night game against Corpus Christi, and then play right again. On, you know, on that Wednesday night against Southeastern, and, and, and you know, having that, you know, the, just getting it started. Now they're kind of in the flow of things, and losing games. I mean, you're, it, it happens sometimes. Um, in the whole the whole country, it's it happened to them. I mean, the whole Clearwater, Florida got washed out on Sunday, so everybody's down two, three games right now. So everybody in the country is pretty much in the, in the same boat. So, you know, we don't feel like we're behind at all, but the girls are just happy that we're actually going and we're in more of a routine now, which is nice. And this weekend, since starting tonight, we got beautiful weather, so we couldn't be happier with that. Yeah, you got Missouri State tonight starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, Coach, uh, why don't you break down this, this four-game series for us? Uh, Missouri State's a good team. I mean, they, they, they've been, you know, at the top of their conference – you know, very recently in, in, in the – I think they're in the Ohio Valley Conference. and They're, they're a talented team, and they, they had they, you know, have some pitchers. They lost an arm. One of their best arms is, you know, just hurt herself a week before the season started. So that, that hurts them a little bit. But they still bring depth in the pitching circle, and, and you know, they can do some things uh, offensively. And it should be a great challenge for us. And I'm excited about a four-game series because it's going to really test our pitching and it's going to – you know, being able to make quality pitches and adjust scouting reports as they adjust, and we'll have to make adjustments. And it'll be fun to, to see that happen because early preseason, that doesn't happen a lot. In softball, usually you're playing five games in three days. You're playing five different teams. This will be a good test for us as far as how, you know, conference play sits too for us with the three-game series. So yeah. we're excited about seeing how we match up and how we're able to make adjustments as the weekend goes with playing the same team four times. Coach, appreciate the time, man. Good luck tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate you. It's Louisiana Tech head coach Josh Taylor. Hey, man, Bulldogs off to a 6-1 and one start. Obviously got a couple wins against ULM this year, too. Uh, that, that's the kind of start you're looking for, Clay. It certainly is. And uh, kudos to both ULM and Tech. Both our softball programs seem to be heading in the right direction, which is great for yeah. our local And team. I love all that local talent, too, when he starts to – rattle off those names it's yeah i got a chance to watch several of those girls play in uh, high school man they're all exceptional players really got a chance to watch carly sellers the last couple of years at west Monroe. like he said she can hit the ball oh, yeah. ain't no doubt about that all right let's get to our pardon shots brought to you by spa Neville. breathe this in man. when we walk out that door breathe it in look at it look at what this is You are the star. You're freaking Elvis. You got an opportunity tonight like no other team ever in Sterlington High School history. I told you all week, you've already joined the fraternity. You want to raise the bar, you want to raise the standard, you go win it. You have your chance to hang your picture in that field house for eternity. That's what you have a chance to do tonight. You stand first all year. You faced it all year. You faced it since the spring until now. 
You take the highs and the lows as they come, and you stay right here. And when the game is over, you just make damn sure we're back in this locker room. Southwest L3, you got that? Bobby weighs in on the Land of Williams Shelter Insurance text line. Love hearing about some of the local prep stars excelling at Tech. No doubt about it. Uh, my parting shot is this. Uh, you know, I feel like we're a little negative this morning with, with the girls' basketball and how things went on uh, last night with quarterfinals. Uh, but I did want to mention this. Prep baseball looks like we're going to have a banner year. It just, it just really does. And if you look at some of these scores last night, I know West Monroe came up short against Catholic, but that was a nine-inning game. Could have gone either way. You're talking about two of the best teams in the entire country. There's still an opportunity to win that series uh, for West Monroe. Of course, they're going to get back in action tonight against Catholic, and you can listen to that on 92.7. Uh, but OCS pulling off a big win against Bird, 12-10. to Sterlington beating West Washtenaw, 4-2. to Two really good teams there. St. Frederick beating Parkway, 5-4. to I just wanted to kind of drill that home that, hey, uh, it, it, it might uh, not have been a so far not a banner year in Washita Parish, especially. But I, I think some uh, some good vibes are here when you're talking about prep baseball. I agree. I agree. I want to mention uh, I saw Matt Areza got signed yeah. by the Chiefs yesterday. He was, if y'all remember, he was a uh, uh, punter Bills back. Punter. Yeah, and said, well, he was drafted in, in the sixth round by the uh, Bills back in 2022. Had some rape allegations, sexual assault allegations. They turned out not to be true. The girl, uh, they dismissed the charges. The girl said it was all fabricated. But he's been sitting there for the last two years. Nobody signed him. Everybody's like, what's the deal? If you remember, he set the NCAA record uh, with a 51.19 punting average uh, at San Diego State back in 2021. Ray Guy Award and everything. Well, he got signed by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs yesterday, the defending Super Bowl champion. So glad to see him get an opportunity to punt. He's a, in, a, some people call him the greatest punting talent maybe in college history or, like I said, one of them anyway. So good, glad to see him get another opportunity. Everybody deserves a second chance. He, like I said, he didn't really do anything wrong. So glad the chance he gets a chance to punt. And not only punt, yeah. but punt for the defending Super Bowl champions. Yeah, it, it, the story kind of came out of left field yesterday because I, I'll be honest with you, when that story happened and then, of course, when it was proven that she fabricated everything and I, you just kind of went, whoa, she just not only – derailed his career but pretty much ruined his life and to see him get another opportunity like it kind of a lot of time had passed since that story came out and you're just like well he's just going to be one of those forgotten guys so here he is getting an opportunity to pump with the with the chiefs now that's good for him i agree all right clay look man i hope you enjoyed the weekend there's if you're a sports fan this is a great weekend for us and playoff hoops tonight baseball softball you name it it's going down this weekend that's right. I'm excited. All right. That's going to do it for us today. We'll be bright and early Monday morning, 6 o'clock. Uh, until then, enjoy your weekend.